My fiancé and I are planning to get married late this year. We had a small rough budget for our wedding. It's a small wedding with only about 30 guests and it'll be hosted on a family friend's property. We've been making the decorations ourselves, doing online RSVPs and ordering our wedding cake from Costco. As a trade-off, my fiancé and I would be going on a very expensive honeymoon. I left my fiancé to buy her wedding dress because I thought she would be mature enough to stay within our budget. I found out she spent $10,000 on a dress she would wear once. She argued that it was her dream wedding dress and that she'd compromised on having an ugly wedding for me. I had no idea she felt that way because she never expressed it. She says she can afford the dress, but we can't afford it. We don't even have a house yet. We can't afford both the dress and the honeymoon trip, and I'm sure the dress was custom made and can't be returned. I immediately cancelled our honeymoon trip. It was booked through an agency and we had insurance, so we only lost out on $250 each. If we'd waited any longer, cancelling would have been a lot pricier. When she found out that I cancelled the honeymoon, she got very angry. She said I had no right to cancel it, and if I didn't fix it, she would go on the honeymoon alone. The wedding party has weighed in, and her friends are mercilessly hammering me about it. Even her dad is mad at me. My friends and family are on my side. Am I the idiot? Edit, it was paid through her savings. We were splitting the honeymoon. We didn't explicitly discuss a dress budget, but given we've been trying to make everything low cost, and we definitely can't afford a $10,000 dress, I assume she'd be reasonable about it. She's never done anything wildly irresponsible like this. She means to use her savings and paychecks to rebook the honeymoon or go on her own trip. I wonder if she'll actually do this. What I know is that will leave her paycheck to paycheck regardless and with a big fat credit card bill if she goes on a honeymoon. OP, maybe you guys should pause on the wedding. There is a significant dispute on finances. $10,000 is a lot, especially if you're trying to save money. Everyone's the idiot here. You guys need to get on the same page regarding finances. Clearly, she's willing to spend much more than you. You really need to get aligned on finances. OP, not the idiot. You can't afford this honeymoon anymore since the money is gone on the dress. Tell everyone who's jumping on you about cancelling the honeymoon that since you spent $10,000 on a dress, they can help pitch in to pay for it. You'll book the trip again once the donations reach at least $10,000. Until then, it's off. Your fiancé is either selfish or financially irresponsible. I kind of have the feeling you won't have to worry about the wedding or the honeymoon. Unless you have the wealth not to discuss a $10,000 dress, who in their right mind would even think they'd need to say not to spend $10,000 on a dress? And it feels like she hid it. I'm sure there were plenty of wedding discussions. How do you accidentally forget to mention you're spending $10,000 for some fabric? That's the thing. Even financially okay people wouldn't spend $10,000 on a dress. My best friend's was $3,000, and I remember how much she was fretting over whether that amount was reasonable because it was so high. If you're getting a Costco cake, you're not getting a $10,000 dress. She's kind of dogging this guy for not specifying a budget, but it shouldn't have to be stated that you shouldn't drain nearly every penny you have on a dress. And she knew that. She used it as a loophole. Seriously, seriously problematic spending. I really don't blame him for cancelling. I'd be seriously reconsidering this marriage. I was at my boyfriend's family home. I'm a nurse. My son burnt himself on the grill by smacking his forehead while playing. He had a little burn. I went to the bathroom to clean it up and put some cold water on it. My boyfriend's great-grandmother's there. There might be some cultural differences between them, as they are Latina, but she insists on putting butter on my kids' burns. I said no, and his mom came to talk to me, saying I should just do this because it's disrespectful to his great-grandmother not to take her advice. She's almost 100. I told his mother it's disrespectful of them not to listen to me about treating my own child, and I'm a nurse, so I'm not putting butter on a small burn. The woman in my family tried to bully me again about the butter, and I finally got mad and said butter is for cooking. Why would I want it on the burn? I saw his mom try to put it on my kid, and I said no damn butter. I took my kid and left. My boyfriend said I shouldn't treat his family like that and just let them do it. In his culture, elders are important. I said in my culture, my boundaries and health are more important than your grandma's ego. We haven't talked since and my friend said I was being insensitive to my boyfriend and his family. Am I the idiot for being culturally insensitive about butter? Edit, my boyfriend is not the father of my son. I'm divorced. Not the idiot. This is about the well-being of your child. 
You do not put butter on burns. I was taught this 34 years ago in first aid in basic training. You're a nurse. You have greater knowledge of these matters than 99% of the population. You're not being culturally insensitive. You're being sensible. Your boyfriend and your friends are being idiots. Maybe show them medical websites that advise against putting butter on burns. Perhaps ask them if they feel it's fair to endanger your own child to perpetrate a harmful myth. Or just tell them to screw off. Butter on a burn is an old home remedy that is harmful rather than helpful. The grease causes the butter to retain more heat, which makes the burn worse. Child's health is more important than respect of old wives' tales. Tell your boyfriend it is your cultural tradition to follow scientific medical advice. Why is respect always a one-way street? What other nonsense will you have to tolerate from these elders? Respecting elders does not mean blind obedience to everything they say. You've just been shown the behavior of the family you'll potentially marry into someday. If they treated me like this, I'd be seriously considering the future of this relationship. My husband, 39, and I, 37 female, have been married for 11 years and have three kids, pre-tween, a young grammar schooler, and a toddler. We both work full-time and our two oldest kids are becoming more active in sports and activities, so our daily lives are hectic. To maintain a sense of self, I have a happy hour every Tuesday with friends. Sometimes it's just an appetizer and a drink and I'm home in an hour or so, but other times we all get full meals and gossip for three or four hours. Last night was one of the long gossiping nights because one of my friends had gone through a breakup. My husband sent me a text around 7.30pm asking when I was going to be home because he was having trouble getting our toddler to bed and needed help. I cut the evening short and got home shortly after 8pm. When I got home, my husband was reading to our two oldest kids and getting them settled into bed. I asked him where our youngest was and he said she was in our room. I found her lying in our bed and it was obvious she'd been crying. She gave me a big hug right away and I consoled her and brought her to her room where she fell asleep pretty much immediately. I asked my husband what the big deal was and he told me that she was refusing to go to bed without me and was screaming at him and throwing tantrums. So he left her in our room while he read to the other kids. I told him that that didn't seem like a good reason for him to make me cut my only social time short. He told me that he'd just asked when I was coming home. He never told me that I needed to come home right away. He said it took me over 30 minutes to get home anyway, so I must have kept talking for a while. I told him that he should be able to take care of the kids for one night a week so that I could have some social time. He got mad and told me that he could take care of the kids just fine, but that some nights he just wanted to have an idea of when I was coming home so that he could tell the kids, especially the youngest since she was going through a cling-to-mom stage. He said the open-ended happy hour that turns into a three-hour meal isn't working for him anymore and he needs me to give him a more structured plan. I told him about my friend's breakup and why we'd been talking so long and he told me that he didn't care about whatever gossip we were talking about. He said he just wants me to be cognizant and aware that not giving him an expected time to be home makes it more difficult for him to plan the night out for the kids. He said he's glad I'm getting social time but that I need to be more respectful of how that impacts him and the kids at home. He also said that my comment about him needing to be able to take care of the kids was a low blow and that he would never say anything like that to me. I told him that one night a week is not too much to ask and that he still could have handled things by himself if he just took a breath and stayed calm. I think you think he messaged you because he wanted you to come home and put the kids to bed, which would be unreasonable. However, what you describe is him asking you to keep him updated on your plans, which isn't unreasonable. On this basis, you are the idiot for exaggerating the issue and making him appear feckless. Hmm, info needed. What are the evening caregiving situations like the rest of the week? What is the nighttime schedule normally like? When does your husband get social time outside the home? We tag team the kids in the evening and at bedtime for the rest of the week. My husband's closest friends have moved away in recent years, so he doesn't get together with friends regularly. He may see his closest friends once or twice a year, but it's usually for a whole weekend. So, you go out weekly with friends, but your husband gets to see his friends four days a year? What I would give for 52 nights a year away from my angels, even if it is just for an hour to wind down with friends or co-workers. Mum, you are the idiot. Your husband sounds like an absolute gem, and you should be thankful to have him. He just wants to know the plan and didn't even ask you to come home. Sounds like he doesn't even care when you get home, just that he knows what's happening. And then you insulted him and treated him like he was incompetent for asking something entirely reasonable. You say you guys tag team all those responsibilities every other night, so clearly he's a very involved parent. 
Just communicate your plans with them and stop dishing out low blows. I was flying from Melbourne to Dubai. I paid for a premium economy seat because it was a 14-hour flight and I wanted to be comfortable. The person in the next seat had been upgraded and they asked if I could switch seats with their wife as they'd just gotten married and they were on their honeymoon. I congratulated him on his nuptials and asked where his wife was sitting. He pointed towards the back of the plane in economy. I declined to switch seats. He asked if there was any way to convince me. I offered to switch if he paid the difference between the seats. It's a good amount. I'd been lucky to get mine at a decent price. It would have only have cost him a thousand Australian dollars. He said they were on a budget for their honeymoon. I congratulated once again and put in my earbuds. He muttered that I was an idiot. I said he was an idiot for taking the upgrade instead of either sitting with his wife or giving it to her. I told my wife about the incident and she thinks I should have done the nice thing. For the record, she hates flying in economy, so I know she wouldn't have switched. Not the idiot at all. People who do this kind of thing are so crappy. Him trying to guilt trip you by telling you he was on his honeymoon was supposed to mean what exactly? Why were he and his wife entitled to a $1,000 gift from a stranger at the last minute? So they planned to take the upgrade and try to trick whoever was sitting there. They played themselves. He said they were on a budget for their honeymoon. What does this have to do with the price of peas? Their poor planning is not your emergency. They should have rejected the upgrade if they wanted to be sure they sat together. Oh, his poor new wife ditched on the way to their honeymoon. If he really wanted to sit with his wife, I'm sure the person beside her would have loved an upgrade to premium economy. He was essentially asking you to pay for his wife's upgrade. As a seasoned flyer from Australia who also works in aviation, I smell a rat. Presumably, they booked together. They could have pleaded their case when the upgrade was processed, either by contacting the airline before the day of flying or in person at the airport. I bet that they booked separately so she couldn't be considered or he has some kind of status with the airline. And I'd also bet that the newlywed yarn was just made up for sympathy. He didn't have to take the upgrade and you are not to blame for his selfishness and lack of planning. My husband Jake, 30, and I, 27 female, recently welcomed our first baby, Emma, who's now a few months old. As most new parents know, it's been a challenging time filled with sleepless nights and endless diaper changes. I'm on maternity leave, so I'm home with Emma all day, but I still need help from Jake, especially during the night. Jake works from home and is a huge gamer. He spends most of his free time playing online games with his friends. I've tried to be understanding and give him his space, but it's been hard when he refuses to help with Emma at night. I've asked him multiple times to take turns getting up with her, but he always says he's too tired or that he has an important game. Breastfeeding has been challenging. Emma often struggles to latch properly, leading to painful and sometimes cracked nipples. I've had mastitis twice already, which leaves me feeling feverish and in intense pain. Despite seeing me in pain, Jake just laughs it off, finding it amusing. He never offers to help during these moments, even though I'm visibly struggling and desperate for support. One night, I'd had enough after I'd been up with Emma for the third time and Jake was still glued to his computer. I went into his office and asked him to take over so I could get some sleep. He waved me off, saying he was in the middle of a game and that I should just handle it. He added, You're on maternity leave and free all day while I have to work, so I need time to relax. You're just sitting around doing nothing all day anyway. I was exhausted and on the verge of tears. I needed his help, but he was completely dismissive. Frustrated and desperate, I walked over to the router and turned off the Wi-Fi. That's when Jake completely lost it. He stormed out of his office, screaming at me. Apparently, he and his friends were in some online tournament and they're about to win when I unplugged the Wi-Fi. He called me selfish and irresponsible and accused me of sabotaging his one form of relaxation. He said that I had no right to interfere with his me time and that I should have just waited until he was done. I calmly explained that I needed his help and that our baby was more important than his game. He refused to listen and continued to criticize me, adding that I haven't been having intimacy with him and that we've only had it four times since Emma was born. He accused me of wanting to take everything away from him while doing nothing all day and sitting at home on my butt. Jake never helps during the day, even after he finishes work at 5pm. I don't expect him to help during work hours, but once he's off, he should step up as a parent. Instead, he goes straight to his games, leaving me to handle everything alone. Since then, he's been sulking around the house, barely speaking to me. To make matters worse, his friends have been sending me nasty messages, calling me a crazy wife and saying I'm unreasonable. One even suggested that Jake leave me because I'm too demanding. 
I feel like I'm losing my mind here, just trying to get a bit of support. I'm exhausted and all I wanted was for Jake to step up and be a parent too. Instead, I'm being painted as the villain for wanting help with our newborn. Am I the idiot? As soon as he brought up the lack of intimacy, it showed who he was. If you told him you wanted it, he would stop gaming when he came home. This has to do with you not catering to his needs. You need to really think about if you want your daughter to be raised in a house where her father mistreats her mother. Remember that kids learn what is acceptable behavior in relationships by watching what their parents do. Is this the kind of relationship that you would want your daughter to have? Saturday morning, put some milk bottles in the fridge. Put the baby on Jake's chest and walk out the door. Come back eight hours later and ask him how sitting around on his butt all day was. Forewarn the mother-in-law that this is happening so she doesn't come and rescue him. Yeah, that's a bad idea. A friend tried that once. She came back to her baby in the car seat all day. The baby hadn't been fed or changed and had a bleeding diaper rash for a week after. After that, getting full physical and legal custody was a breeze, but I swear it changed the baby. He was never quite the same. Oh my goodness, that's horrifying. I was going to say something about how I wouldn't trust him for that long and maybe try for an hour, but then I caught myself because that's not normal. If she can't trust him to watch the baby for an hour, let alone eight, then he shouldn't be a parent. OP, this is one of those times when someone tells you who they are and you should listen. He doesn't care about you or the baby, and it doesn't get better from here. He will not snap out of it and just become a loving father. He will neglect you and your baby until he has sucked the life force from you, and you're left wondering who you are.